Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Ahmed Munir. I'm a pharmacy student, faculty of pharmacy, South Canada University, year of 2023. It will be my pleasure to present the coming video on behalf of Group 21. The video title is about constipation. In this video, we are going to talk about the definition of constipation, causes of constipation, diagnosis of constipation, alarming symptoms of constipation, and the management of constipation. So let's start with the definition of constipation. Constipation is a condition characterized by inability to pass stools that become hard and more difficult to pass. Or it's a condition in which stool become hard, dry, and difficult to pass. And bowel movements don't happen very often. Other symptoms may include painful bowel movements and feeling bloated, uncomfortable, and sluggish. Talking about the causes of constipation, which may be relevant to the motility reasons, mechanical reasons, metabolic reasons, neurogenic reasons, pharmacological reasons, or other reasons. Motility reasons may be due to diet, irritable bowel syndrome, colonic inertia, pelvic floor disorders. Mechanical reasons may be like strictures, tumors, prolapse, rectocele, diverticular disease, extrins and compression. Metabolic reasons may be due to diabetes, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, hypothyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, and chronic kidney failure. Neurogenic reasons may be due to stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, neuropathy, or myopathy. Pharmacological reasons may be due to drugs like opioids, TCAs, mood stabilizers, diuretics, iron supplementation, calcium supplements, and other drugs. Other reasons may include scleroderma, celiac disease, anal pain like fissures, and chronic laxative use, and psychological reasons may affect constipation. So how constipation is being diagnosed? Usually tests and diagnostic procedures are not needed for diagnosis of constipation because this condition is better known by taking the detailed history from the patient about the signs and symptoms. Details of bowel habits. Diagnosis is made from the change in the bowel habits. So details of ignoring urges to pass a stall, details about the inadequacy of time and the privacy for the passing stalls are also asked. Details of diet and lifestyle habits shall be collected as well. The patient is asked about the amount of fibers they get in their daily diet, lack of fluid, and the amount of red meats, processed meats, and canned foods also leads to increased risk of constipation. Details of medications and laxative use. Several medications may cause constipation as a side effect. Laxative abuse is also an important cause of constipation and needs to be de detected while diagnosing constipation. So what are the alarming symptoms of constipation? If your constipation is associated with any of these symptoms, you are not having run-of-the-mill constipation and you need to seek medical attention immediately. If your constipation is associated with blood in a stool, may appear as bright or dark red, maroon or black. If your constipation is associated with loss of weight or a major change in your normal bowel pattern, also pain that keeps getting worse or wakes you from sleep. When you consider to go immediately to the emergency room with constipation, if it's associated with severe pain, large or persistent bleeding, dizziness or lightheadedness, a distant abdomen, tight as a drum or a major change, or if you cannot keep food or fluid down, or if you're having fever with your constipation. So what about the management of constipation? The management of constipation includes lifestyle and dietary changes, and of course, treatment by drugs. Talking about the lifestyle and dietary changes, including enough fibers in diet, Fibers are available in fruits, vegetables, whole grain rice, whole wheat bread, and extra. Enough fluids in diet, fluids like water, 
and fruit juices help prevent dehydration and help in softening the stalls as well. Certain fluids like caffeine, alcohol, and fizzy drinks are not good for bowel motions, and excessive coffee or alcohol may pre precipitate constipation. Being active and mobile helps prevent constipation, ideally around 150 minutes of moderate physical activity is recommended every week. Developing good toilet habits, the urge to go to the toilet shouldn't be ignored. When delayed, the urge usually passes away, and this may raise the risk of constipation. The best time for passing stalls is first thing in the morning or around half an hour after a full meal. Managing constipation can be done also by giving laxatives. There are three major classes of laxatives, includes bulk laxatives, osmotic laxatives, and stimulant laxatives. For the bulk laxatives, those are agents increase the bulk of the stall form it and soften them to ease passage. They soften the stalls by retaining the fluids within the stall. They also prevent stall impaction or fecal impaction. Commonly prescribed bulk laxatives include psyllium, polycarpophyll, and methyl cellulose. Secondly, osmotic laxatives. They work by drawing the water into the intestine and make the soles soft. These are prescribed if the bulk laxatives fail to work. Commonly prescribed osmotic laxatives include lactulose. And finally, the stimulant laxatives. These laxatives are used if the other two agents have failed to cause softening and passage of stools. These agents stimulate the muscles of the gut to contract and expel the feces. The most commonly prescribed stimulant laxatives are sinna, pisacodyl, and sodium picosulfate. These agents take around 6 to 12 hours to work and should be used on short-term basis only. They are also useful for bowel clearing in patients who are to undergo surgery. By here, we have reached the end of presentation. And finally, I would like to thank you very much for listening and thank all the group for preparing these slides and the material.